Hey guys, James here from TCG University, Come back at you with another deck profile. Today I'm going to be showing you my deck profile on my Yuri deck. Uh, I kind of grabbed it weird. On my Yuri deck. Uh, she was a lot of fun to play. She's one of my favorite characters from King of Fighters. I played her for a solid couple of metas. Had a lot of fun playing her. Played her at a couple of majors as well. Um, did decently well. Didn't make tops, but made decently well with her. Um, I think she's really cool and very, very techy. I think she's a lot of fun as a... Um, uh, if you want to play her competitively, you have to work really, really hard at it. But if you want to play her casually and try to find cool, neat tricks, I think there's a lot to be had there. So uh, let's get in the profile and you can see the deck. Okay, guys. Yuri is a six-hand size, 26 vitality character with the all life and water symbols. Have, knowing all three of those symbols actually matters this time. I'm not just saying it for card's sake. Uh, it matters that you know that she has all life and water. We'll get to that in a second. Um, she has two abilities. Uh, enhance, if your attack does damage, you gain one vitality, and you gain one resource symbol of your choice until the start of your next turn. Uh, that's the reason it matters. You get to gain vi you get to gain resources, uh, which is very cool. And like this was the techie part I was talking about the deck is you can do a lot of cool things, but if you really want to play it hyper competitively, you have to really start knowing very various in and outs of how like symbol structuring works and how the deck numbers and all that. There's so much numbers that go into like. Knowing, oh, how many, how many of, uh, how many of my all life, good and chaos cards are left in my deck? What do I choose here? What do I choose there? And this is where I got into, like, you'll hear me talk about a lot, where uh, numbers matter by knowing your deck, knowing each of this. This is the deck that really got me into like hard knowing that this in uh, Eva, where you play like a hundred cards, and you once you get to the bottom of your deck, you kind of want to know what you're going to check and whatnot. And it's not as easy when you uh, when you don't really remember what you have because you have a hundred cards or whatever. But uh, for Yuri, uh, you you can play as many cards as you want. I don't care about that. But you need to know what symbols you have. So um, one of the easy ways I found is uh, since I have copies of these, these are the uh, 12 uh, assets of power. They are just all the symbols, good, chaos, order, death. So like I always start the game with all life and water. Uh, and then I give myself symbols, obviously, when my attacks do damage with Yuri. And then uh, you add her second ability is the main part of why you need to know your symbols is response after your opponent plays their second non-foundation card this turn. Search a deck for one card that shares three resource symbols with your character. Reveal it and add to your hand. So every time an attack deals damage, you get a new symbol. So you start out with your three and then oh, I'll give myself the fire symbol. Uh, second one dealt, I'll give myself the void. And then the third one dealt, I'll give myself air. So now you have six symbols on your character and you can start doing some really cool things. Like if you wanted to really off symbol some cards, you could go... Well, I want to pick up this Life Void Water card. I want to pick up this Life Void Life card. Uh, air Life uh, Void card. I want to pick up this Fire Water Air card. And you can start doing some really weird symbol structuring. Um, so one of the main symbols you'll always add, in my opinion, for the way the deck's built is um, the air symbol. Air symbol is very important for a deck, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So let's get into the main part of the deck. We'll move Yuri here. Works for me. Actually, can we go here where you can see her? Yeah, we'll go there. Still not very good. but um, So we're going to go with main, her main card, HRK Hayo Rykin. It's a 5 high for 7. It's a 6 diff, 3 control. Uh, only has one keyword. That's important. We'll get to that later as well. I'll respond after you play his cards. Cards cannot be removed from your... from your uh, Cannot be removed or played from the discard piles by effects for the rest of the turn. Only playable if you have not already played a card or removed a card from a discard pile or whatnot. So you just get basically limit your opponent from doing things. So um, it, this sh if you block with this, it shuts off things like um, Shadow Slicer. shuts off things like... Um, uh, shuts off weird things like Shadow Slicer and stuff you just don't want recurring a bunch. Uh, decks that were removed from their discard pile to do really cool things like Jet or something like that. Just you shut that off. They just don't get to do that for the rest of the turn. And then it enhances if this tech deals damage. You gain a vitality for each resource symbol on your character. And then if you're at max, you draw two. Uh, so one of the cool things you can do with your deck is, uh, well, I about grabbed the wrong card. Uh, we'll talk about our next card, which is Chris Splat. Chris Splat's a four diff, three control, three high for four that says if it deals, you gain two, and then you commit a card to make your next card ignore. Uh, so you can play your, you can play like three, four attacks in front of Chris Splat, or whatever. Play your, play your attack turn, end with Chris Splat, and then end with HRK, and then for every attack that dealt in front of your Chris Splat. See, every attack that dealt in front of your Chris Platt, you gained a you gained a symbol and a vitality off Yuri. And then Chris Platt, if it deals, gives you another symbol, another life from Yuri, two life from itself. And then if the HRK deals, you gain a bunch of vitality equal to all the symbols you have. 
and then uh, you draw two cards if you're a max, which if, like, you play two attacks before the like, Kersplat, it's one, two, three, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, and then you have three symbols off of these three, her three, so that's six. You can gain 11, 12 life off of Yuri. So if you were at 14 or lower, if you were at 14 or higher, you go back to full health, and then you draw with Hyroken, which is just nuts. Just being able to go back to full health at, with any character when being, like, at half health is crazy good, in my opinion. Uh, so we talked about the, sorry, there were four of them in the deck. I We kind of skipped that part. Uh, next, we'll talk about the reason why you need the air symbol Templar. Uh, the reason I give air as the, like the immediate symbol I give is because life all in air are the symbols for Templar. Uh, when your opponent, pl Templar is a very good block as a one mid. When you block with it, you draw two, gain two. It keeps your hand size up, keeps your vitality up. It's a decent half block. It's a very good block in general. And it's just one symbol away from just being a free ad for Yuri. So that's, that's just the why I think you pick air first. Uh, take note that Kersplat also shares all three symbols with Yuri. So it's just also a free pickup if you don't hit with Yuri. Uh, so we'll move Templar out of the way. Uh, next we're going to talk about actually one of my favorite cards in the deck unexpectedly, which is um, we don't, we are splitting cards in between us because obviously this event is um, a little more older. So like a lot of people are trying to do really cool things and we didn't have enough shotguns in between all the decks, but we're playing for shotgun. Uh, shotgun's very cool in our deck. As it says, it gets plus one damage for each uh, resource, printed resource symbol on your, uh, in a card. For each printed resource symbol in your card pool that matches a resource symbol with your character. Uh, so this says printed resource symbol in your card pool. So obviously it doesn't... So like you can give a bunch of symbols. You can give all 12 symbols to your character and still get a billion, a billion damage with shotgun. Because it says printed on the cards in your card pool. So like... Um, Things like uh, multiples don't give the won't give uh, free damage as far as far as I know. I'm not 100 sure actually, but um, the reason I say that is because we play a bunch of cards that add cards back to our card pool. Or you play this at the end of your turn, you've given yourself a bunch of symbols. Those symbols count towards this because you gave yourself symbols, and since it gives uh, for each print, printed resource symbol in your card pool that matches a symbol on your character, it doesn't say printed on your character. It just says matches a symbol on your character, and when you give yourself a bunch of symbols, you get to get a bunch of damage and then it gives throw to itself because that's that was needed and then it's also a two high for uh, it's also a two high block and a breaker one which is crazy uh, now we're going to get into the main part of the deck which is um, life gain uh, like I said gaining with HRK is very very cool but sometimes HRK is going to get blocked so you need other choices so we're playing three wind embrace uh, wind embrace is just a three high for six throw that says we can discard the top two cards of our decks to uh, of our deck to burn our opponent for one and gain two vitality, which is super crazy. Uh, we kind of combo the entire deck ar with our throws around English aristocrat, which says uh, if you attack with two or fewer keywords, which all of our attacks are, deals damage, uh, you get to gain through vitality. And when it gives three speed to a throw, uh, like this is a six high for six throw that's going to gain me five, six off Yuri crazy good uh then we have uh insect puppeteer this is the main defensive like key piece you'll use every single turn back to back to back no matter how you're trying to do it every time your turn comes up it's insect puppeteer do a cool thing um you can add a printed four damage attack that's a life card from your discard pile to your card pool and then ready this foundation adding is the cost so that's really cool for this deck uh, we don't care about the bottom damage ability. It's a solid spam. And then the main card we're adding is the four negative stolen. Uh, negative stolen is just a four diff throw. That's a two mid for four. Uh, it has an ability, it has an enhance that says if it's not blocked, you can choose not to clear from your card pool, which is also very useful. But the main ability is it's static that says while it's in the card pool, after an, an attack deals damage, you can gain one vitality. So um, I'll stuff three of these in with my insect bump tiers. Did my throw deal damage? I'll gain off Yuri. I'll gain one. I'll gain one. I'll gain one. Uh, do cool abilities. I'll uh, pass turn. I gained I gained one, two, three, four. And then I uh, got a symbol that I'll use next turn when my opponent plays stuff. And then I'll just build out. Or you build first, play it, and then do cool things. Like it just, you just get to gain life every single turn and make sure that if your opponent's trying to play a poke game, they're just not allowed to. The pokes don't matter. Uh, then the other card we play that kind of combos with the Insect Prep tier is Hand Cannon. Uh, this was basically your replacement if you didn't play HRK in the new meta when HRK rotated and this card was out. Uh, this card says your opponent, uh, cards can't leave your opponent's discard pile or card pools due to their effects. So just kind of the same thing, just stops your opponent from playing things from the discard pile. This card's also very good against uh, Shadow Slicer. 
But you get to just auto add it. You just auto add it and it shuts off the entire turn. You just don't have to you don't have to block with it or anything. Uh now we're into uh making sure my opponent's attacks don't deal as much damage. Uh we have one swordfish two. Uh add this momentum, add my opponent's attack to momentum. If their attack's ever getting too out of hand and I just can't handle it, we'll just abort it, put in their momentum and just not have to worry about it. Uh, then we have three superhero know-how. This card's really cool as um, it's also just one symbol away from me being able to pick it up with the area. All you have to do is give yourself the good symbol. So if you give yourself the good symbol, you're able to search this from your deck, add it to your hand. Uh, and the cool ability on this is after you block with it, you can add it to your staging area ready. So you pick it up with Yuri, you block with it, it adds to your staging area ready. And, well, we'll do this. You add it. Block with it as your stage area ready. And then the ability that we mainly use on it is the enhance. Turn this asset face down. It basically becomes a face down foundation. Your opponent's death, evil, or void attack gets minus three damage. Minimum of one. Uh, just anytime your opponent's playing uh, those three symbols, you just get to auto just debuff your opponent's stuff, which is crazy good. Especially when you got to practically block for free. Uh, we're playing one Omega Sword and Elk Shield. When we block with it, we only take one. We can force our opponent to commit a bunch of found a couple of foundations a turn. We're able to block with it from our staging area. Solid card all around. Uh, one survivalist. It's a three-five non-block that says after opponent's attack receives a speed or damage bonus, we just return it back to his printed speed and damage. Uh, this just means we don't get, take a bunch of damage from uh, our opponent's attacks. If they're super buffing, we just drop them back to normal. Uh, if we just need it to be slightly lower because we're trying to do stuff and they buff it, we can just go, uh, you gave it plus two and I just don't really want it to have it, yeah, minus two. Or it could be something like uh, Death Lord Impalement. I'll give it plus a billion damage. Cool. I'll give it plus a billion speed. I'll just return it back to printed. I don't want to deal with that. Uh, one last of its kind. We gain life easily, so mitigating a bunch of damage is very worth it for us. Pay two to give minus four damage. Make sure we take less. Make it easier for us just to gain back to full. And then a desperation, if we ever hit that, we do get free damage. Uh, or deadlock as well. We might hit deadlock a lot with this deck, so being able to just hit that is pretty nice. Uh, then we have four Athena's Knights. Uh, this card's really good. Uh, turn this foundation face down. You know, this attack gets minus two damage. If they are gender male, this attack gets minus three instead, both minimum one. The cool part about this card is with all the new non-gendered characters, just because they're trying not to print so much stuff on cards, um... Since there's no gender on them, they are presumed to have worst case scenario, which means this almost always versus newer characters will deal minus three damage to them, which is pretty cool. We have three portal bear. Uh, before we take damage from an attack, we can reduce the damage by one by checking a five. Uh, so getting three of these on board is really good. Our opponent swings with a five damage attack. We just go, ah, no block. Check a five. Ah, I failed it. Check a five. Pass. Check a five. Pass. Oh, cool. I'll take three. I'll gain four next turn. Who cares? Just being able to mitigate a bunch of damage is really good. Same thing with the moral knowledge. What's per turn? Plus one or minus one damage. Helps build, helps buff our throws, debuffs our opponents. It's really good. Uh, we have one Omega Sword and L Shield. Uh, we want to be able to block. We don't want to take too much damage. The idea is to stay at max health as long as possible to do really cool things. So just being able to do that is really good. And then we can give damage to our throws if they, if they have block mods, which is also very good. Uh, one Nightmare Terrace, uh, it's two symbols off of being able to pick for free, so you have to give yourself death and order. But if you know you're playing against a, a person who plays a lot of throws, like Nutcrackers, Missile Launchers, and stuff like that, and you really need to pick this up, then you give yourself those symbols and you get to free pick this up, which is practically just a free block. Uh, one of my favorite older cards, uh, High School Crush. Uh, it's a 2-5-3 mid block that says... Uh, when it's added to your stage, you, know, you check the top card of your deck, and then if it's a foundation, it comes to your hand. Uh, kind of plus plus one to hand size yourself sometimes. And uh, then if not, E, check a, uh, if after it's in the stage area, uh, E, check a four. This attack gets minus one speed. Uh, just nice, decent speed buff you can play on every single attack to really make sure you can block something. Uh, two Dust in the Wind, practically one of the best speed, uh, speed manipulation in the game. Uh, it's a two, five, three high block that says after your opponent receives a speed bonus, you give it minus that speed bonus. Basically, you give them, instead of them receiving the X speed bonus, they get minus X instead. Uh, so, like, I'll give it plus three. Well, I'll give it minus six. So, practically, minus three instead. Uh, it just means anytime your opponent buffs something, you debuff it instead, which is pretty cool. Make sure you really block something. Uh, two bakery poster girl. If your opponent's played three or more enhances during a turn, just return it back to printed. Uh, back to zero, sorry. And j play ball committed. Super strong card. 
uh, one generous gambler. Take all these face-down foundations we're creating and just give speed or nade speed. Make sure our attacks go through or make sure our opponents don't. Uh, when we, If we do have to overcommit, we have Haunted by Loss. Or to keep us out of deadlock, if our opponent has some really good deadlock cards, we have Haunted by Loss. Destroy one committed foundation. This attack gets minus two speed. Uh, just give us more speed hate. Uh, I really like this card. I think this card is just like a one of in every life deck I play. Uh, because we play a bunch of throws, we're playing Surveyor. We are now into our offensive stuff. Uh, surveyors are offensive stuff. Uh, surveyor is E, uh, form commit, add one momentum to your hand. Uh, this is just a foundation form of um, the Tournament Looms. Uh, personally, I actually think I would have rather played Tournament Looms instead of this card. That's just me after playing. But um, I think this card's still really, really cool. And actually, being able to play both of these would be pretty sick. But um, just form, commit, I'll pick up an attack and know I'm going to attack you. Did you, it still deal half because of the throw? I'll pick it up next turn. Don't worry. Uh, one of Sun's Love. Make us a seven-hander. It's pretty neat. Being a seven-hander that already tries to gain a bunch of life is pretty cool. Uh, kind of the same thing behind Stunning New Look. If we are at max vitality, form, commit, draw a card, which is pretty cool. Uh, then Water Enhance, E, commit. Uh, discard all cards from our card pool. Only playable during our opponent's turn. So um, this just allows us to block a lot for free. Um, or block a, block a few and then clear a card pool and block for free again. It just basically confirms that we're going to block something during our turn, which is pretty good when we do get to pick up basically a free block with Yuri. On uh, the last offensive card in our deck is Passing the Torch. Passing the Torch is just the solid 2-5, draw 1 or draw 2, depending on what's in our hand. Uh, drawing extra cards in a, like I said, in a 6-hander that gains a bunch of life is crazy good. Uh, now we're going to get the defense. Um, we have three caught red handed, uh, drawing cards is nuts. And this card's just a better version of venomous. So turn it face down, cancel a draw, f draw effect. That's non-character. Same thing as venomous, except you don't have to destroy. It's not play well committed, but also has a really solid block. Has a solid block as well. And just being able to cancel cool draw abilities is very, very good. Uh, we had two Kegos aid. Um, I figured that the, uh, retro form would be very combo heavy and having a plus two difficulty to something breaker two, basically is going to, was going to be very good. Uh, then we have ominous prophecy. Like I said, combo decks, are, I thought were going to be pretty cool. Uh, I still think they're going to be pretty cool. I've only, pl I played one and then somebody else played a, There are a couple others that got played during a tournament. Uh, but I wanted to be able to just turn that off for a turn and not have to worry about it. Uh, so, you know, do cool things, stop cool things. And the last card, one of my favorite cards in the game as well, Egotistical. Egotistical just says if you uh, if you take damage, uh, draw a card. Only play if you have not added cards to your hand this combat phase. Uh, it's really cool because you can just... I'll face tank with Yuri after reducing a bunch of damage. Cool. I'll draw a card with Yuri. I mean, I'll draw a card with Egotistical. Cool. You played your second attack. I'll add a card with Yuri. So you can add... You can draw a card and then add a reversal depending on if you drew a card with a block or not. Which just lets you do some really cool combo stuff. Thanks again for checking out the profile, guys. If you liked my Yuri deck, let me know down below. Uh, she's one of my favorite characters in the game. I really wish they'd print something similar to her. Uh, maybe in like a DLC or something. Just something, some promo. I, I really like her mechanic of getting symbols. I like her mechanic of gaining life. I like her mechanic of picking a free card, uh, depending on the symbol she grabs. I, I really like the deck building aspect that comes with that. Uh, so make sure to let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you want to support us, go to patreon.com slash TCG University. Uh, hit us up at that $1 level. You get access to most of our content early, most of our content live. Uh, you get access to our personal Discord where you can talk to me and tell me how much you like my Yuri deck, how much you don't like my Yuri deck. Tell me about your Yuri deck. Tell me about cool decks you have planned for retro. Tell me about cool stuff like that. Um, you get access to talk to the White Schwartz guys, the Final Fantasy guys, the Magic guys, the rest of our universes community. You get to talk to all of them. Um, uh, make sure to check out the other videos in this playlist. Make sure to check out the other deck profiles and whatnot. Uh, make sure to check out the Campus Championship live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central. Uh, we're out there hanging out, having fun. Um, and as always, guys, stay alert. Mm -hmm.